Have you ever daydreamed about pulling off the ultimate heist? You know, like the ones you see in movies where a group of super smart folks outsmarts top-notch security and walks away with millions right under everyone's noses? Well, believe it or not, that kind of thing actually happened a few decades back. There was this unlikely crew of Vietnamese scammers who managed to swipe a whopping $7 million from casinos. It was a massive haul back then, all thanks to a super clever plan they pulled off flawlessly. Their stories like something out of a movie, seriously. So get comfy, because I'm about to spill all the details of the Tran organization's epic heist. Our story begins in the early 2000s in San Diego, California, a seemingly quiet city where no one would suspect that one of the biggest heists in gambling history was about to unfold. The main characters were a humble Vietnamese couple, Van Thu Tran and her husband, Phuong Quoc Trong, better known in gambling circles as Pai Gao John. Far from being a criminal mastermind, Truong was just a compulsive gambler and drifter who had some experience working in casinos. It was there that he learned certain sleight-of-hand tricks that dealers used to entertain, like the so-called false shuffle, an apparently innocent maneuver in which the dealer pretends to shuffle a mix of cards when in reality they leave them almost intact in their original order. At first glance, it seemed like a trivial magic trick with no real significance, but in the right hands, it turned out to be the first step towards a truly wicked plan. You see, Trong, tired of his loser's life, decided to use that trick to turn his luck around. The first piece he needed was a dealer willing to perform the false shuffle while on duty. He found her in a woman who worked alongside him at the Sikwan Casino in San Diego, a modest operation with slot machines located on an Indian reservation. He convinced her to do the trick during Pai Gao games, an ancient Chinese poker game. The plan was simple. While the dealer kept the cards in the same sequence, Trong and Van Thu Tran would memorize that order. That way, they could accurately predict future plays and know exactly when to bet big, an immense advantage in the game. The first tries went really well. In just a month of testing, this homemade scam scored them a whopping $158,000 at Sikwan Casino alone. That kind of cash made it clear they were on to something big. But Pai Gao John and Van Thu weren't satisfied with just scraps. With their pockets now full, they decided to up their game. They packed up and moved to the outskirts of Sacramento, setting up their new base at Cash Creek Casino. There, they began recruiting new members to join their criminal organization, expanding their ranks with close relatives willing to join the dirty business for a generous cut of the loot. Cousins, uncles, parents, no one was excluded. In just a few months, the original small group had grown into a formidable force of nearly 40 people. But assembling the team was just the first part of the challenge. Now they needed insiders willing to risk their jobs to pull off the fraud and make a lot of money in the process, of course. At Cash Creek, also in California, the Tran organization launched an intensive recruitment operation, managing to bribe a small number of dealers who agreed to perform the false shuffle at the mini Baccarat tables. With the infiltrators secured, they were finally ready to set their criminal machine in motion. Their operational plan was almost a masterpiece in its simplicity and effectiveness. Team members took turns at the mini Baccarat tables in coordinated blocks during the day, night, and early hours to avoid arousing suspicion. While one casually pretended to smoke a cigarette, they were actually meticulously memorizing the exact order in which the cards were dealt after the dealer's false shuffle. This member would act as the tracker, relaying the data through a hidden microphone to a spotter stationed outside the casino. The spotter's job was to manually input this data into a computer with specialized software to track patterns and determine when the same cards would reappear. Simultaneously, they transmitted this information through a hidden earpiece to the player, so they knew precisely when to place their bets. If the tracker took a drag with one finger, it meant bet big. If they used two fingers, it signaled maximum bet. In this synchronized and almost clandestine manner, the Tran organization managed to rake in millions right under the noses of the casinos for years. During their peak days, they even scored up to $50,000 in just 10 minutes of gameplay, capitalizing on their advantage. 
Casinos along the West Coast fell one after another, unable to explain the massive losses while the gang mobilized like a perfectly coordinated swarm toward their next target. As their profits grew, so did the Tran family's appetite and ambition. They didn't hesitate to switch tactics to aim for even bigger game, the blackjack tables where betting limits are much higher. Of course, blackjack posed a new challenge, as the rules don't allow players to take notes or record cards on the fly. But for Pai Gal John, this was just another minor obstacle to overcome. The solution he implemented was to incorporate wireless transmission devices into their dirty game, hidden microphones and cigarettes, and discrete earpieces to remotely connect the tracker with the spotter. Here's how it worked. The tracker would take a fake drag and orally transmit the cards to the spotter. The spotter would input them into their pattern recognition program and instruct the player on what moves to make with simple instructions through the earpiece. Double, stand, split. With this technology, the gang's effectiveness became nearly unstoppable. In no time, their successes became bolder and more lucrative. One of their greatest feats took place in October 2005 when, during a visit to Resorts East Chicago, the gang managed to walk away with a record-breaking haul of $868,000 in a single night. A staggering sum for the time, which allowed them to indulge in luxuries and flaunt their sudden wealth with acquisitions like high-end sports cars and real estate properties. But far from being satisfied, the massive score only served to further fuel the flames of greed within the group. When there's too much money at stake, ambition often clouds the judgment even of the most seasoned criminals. That would be precisely the Achilles heel that would ultimately seal the fate of the Tran organization years later. Because at the peak of their apparent success, ringleader Fuang Kwok Trong began to display increasingly erratic and greedy behavior. Jealous of retaining the lion's share of the million-dollar earnings, he decided to start scrimping on payments owed to his most valuable accomplices, the dealers who risk their jobs to perform the false shuffle. It was a big mistake, a backstabbing move that no one in the organization saw coming. Before long, some of these bitter and betrayed dealers decided to do what no one expected, become prime informants for the FBI. Authorities have been trying for years to uncover why so many casinos were suffering inexplicable million-dollar losses. Suddenly, they had all the information they needed served on a platter, the names, methods, and even the travel patterns of the Tran gang. They just had to wait for them to strike again to catch them red-handed. The opportunity didn't take long to arise in June 2006. The feds received a tip-off that part of the Tran team had returned to the starting point of the whole illegal operation, San Diego's Siquan Casino. They sprang into action, alerting the casino authorities and setting up undercover cameras to capture all the evidence. What those cameras filmed was game over for the Trans. In just 20 minutes, they saw how, led by one of the top guys, a man named Willie Tran, the gang made off with over $20,000 from the blackjack tables before boldly leaving. With those images, the FBI and prosecutors had what they needed to shut down the operation for good. All that was left was to figure out how and when to make their move. The answer? 2007. It was in that year when arrest warrants began raining down like hail on the members of the Tran organization. One by one they fell, accused of charges including extortion, robbery, and money laundering on a massive scale. In total, 47 members of the family group were arrested that year and brought to court to face charges for stealing over $7 million from nearly 30 casinos across different parts of the United States during five years of operations. The evidence was solid, videos, recordings, confessions from remorseful dealers, and financial records. The Tran organization was busted wide open with no way out. Gang members lined up to plead guilty, cutting deals to return some of the dirty cash in exchange for lighter sentences. But for leaders like Trong and Tran, the punishment was severe, 70 and 36 months behind bars respectively, plus the hefty task of coughing up nearly $6 million in damages. Trong also had all his ill-gotten assets confiscated, from real estate properties to luxury cars and expensive watches. He had tasted the sweetness of greed at its peak, and now he was back to square one, penniless. As for the dealers involved, some got off with lighter sentences for helping with the investigation, while others got a few years behind bars for specific charges like tax dodging. The bottom line? No matter how slick the scheme, the house always wins. The Tran organization learned that the hard way. 
despite thinking they were untouchable. But that's the gamble you take when you push your luck too far. If you're hungry for more real crime stories and well-played scams, then subscribe to this channel right now and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on what's coming up next. See you there.